Hello, filmmakers and film lovers. This is Kirsten with Rogue Cinema, and today I have two very special people joining me. I have director Mark Timian and actress Karis Yannicki joining me from the film She Lives Her Life. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, what's up? <laughs> so before we start, um, She Lives Her Life, I just want to show the quick trailer of it. It's an awesome film. We just did a review of it. Um, so here is the trailer. You're right. Just one, and then it's over. I promise that I'm safe. I mean, it's up to you, but I'm only gonna offer runs, so you can take it or leave it. Okay, I'll go with you. If you need somebody to f*** up, I got a gun. And that's She Lives Her Life on IMDb, which you can find. So, you guys, tell me how you guys came up with the concept for this film, which I understand you guys kind of had the idea and used the idea from a French film, right? Yes. Uh... I met Eris uh, a little over four years ago, and I casted her in a short film called Way to Go, Christine. And it was really just pretty immediately after we shot that, uh, I'd always loved the old film, uh, Viva Civi, the French film. And just meeting her, something about her just kind of started a big explosion in my head, and I just thought it would be cool to remake it, but also just kind of update it to a modern day setting, and she just seemed like the, the perfect fit to do that with, so that's how it all started. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> now, and so you guys both, you guys wrote the script together. Yes, uh, actually we, uh, the script came, we spent like, what, like six months going back and forth on how we wanted to approach it. Mm -hmm. Um, for a while there, we kind of had some weird character arcs that didn't really happen in the original, so like we were kind of going back and forth with each other for a while before we just basically decided to stick to the basics, which were the recreations of all the screenshots that we wanted to do, and not really focus on so much of the plot of the story, because the plot of the story is kind of vague in the original anyway. Right. So Try to, as you know, independent filmmakers, pooling our own resources as far as locations and other actors we could bring in. And just kind of trying to create, you know, the story based on that. Yeah. We, we definitely simplified it. Yes. Uh, the The first drafts that we did, I think, uh, we sort of, I felt, I think we both felt that we kind of got away from the original source yeah. material, and and we knew it wasn't working. And I'm very thankful that we didn't go forward yes, yes, with some did. of our original drafts <laughs> because it, it just, it, it 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 didn't work. And then we both just kind of stepped away from it and went and did our own sort of things. And there was a while where uh, I honestly didn't think we were ever going to get back to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of it kept nagging at me, and I was like, I really feel like this is the correct thing to do. And then the so the next draft that we went with, it was just very stripped down, very basic. It was only a 40-page script, and there was a lot of room in there for improvisation and just certain 
uh, uh, spontaneous things that could happen on the set that we kind of allowed in, and I think yeah. that's closer to the spirit of the original film anyway. So yeah, it it, it worked out eventually, you know, but it, but it definitely took a little time to get there. So yeah, like a lot of the dialogue is improv. Like it, we had like a basic outline of like what we wanted to say, and then we just kind of relied on the actors to just basically move the scene along in their own words. Oh Which, wow! Yeah. That's really cool, and it definitely does have that very realistic feel, for the most part. Of course, I don't see very many gorilla-suited men running around on the street. Sure. <laughs> but I definitely did get that very realism feel from the film. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, that's great. And so let's talk about a little bit about your locations. Now, you guys shot the whole film in Nebraska? Yes, correct. Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, because it... It has that beautiful, especially the, the last scene where you're running. Um, I don't want to give it away for, for anybody who watches it, but uh, when you're running in the last scene, it's just like this open, expanse of space, and it's just beautiful. And, and then, of course, you also have, in contrast to that, the store that you shot in, um, which, you know, was awesome. It looks, you know, very much like a little hipster little thrift shop. <laughs> Basically, what it is, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, it was it was just kind of one of those things finding the locations. I mean, a, a lot of the locations, like the bars and stuff, were places yeah. that we hang out, you know. Yeah, and, so they're just like, yeah, come on in and shoot. <laughs> and we know the people, and we're very comfortable there. Uh, the ending place at the end, that's an old kind of abandoned uh, aircraft field, like that was built around like World War II. That's not even used anymore. So there's used to these streets that are out there that just kind of go nowhere, you know. And I just kind of wanted something open and strange, a little bit of a surreal feeling to it. So that's that's where that place came from. And then like the boutique as well. I mean, I looked around for some legitimate yeah pawn shops, pawn shops but it's hard. Yeah, no, we couldn't score an actual legitimate one. Nobody really wanted us in there. So we just kind of made do with that place, but it does have a certain charm to it, I think. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I love the, the robbery scene, of course, which is in the very, fir very first section of the film. Um, but all the locations look great. Now, how is the independent film scene in Lincoln, Nebraska? Um, it's, it's pretty decent. There's a lot of really talented people doing a lot of uh, 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 good stuff out there. Um, a lot of friends that we know are doing, really getting into web series and they're having like a lot of success with that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I mean, it's, I find that the community is like very, very helpful. Like we help each other a lot. We do each other favors a lot. You know, like everybody pretty much knows each other and there's always new people, new blood coming through. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a very... Uh, very vibrant community, I would say. What would you say, Mark? Yeah, no, it's small, and <clears throat> so it really is. Everybody knows everybody, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then sometimes, I mean, we just have uh, where everyone will just kind of get together and hang out. And we've done these, uh, like I don't know, we haven't done it in a while, but filmmaker soirees. Yeah, and everyone just kind of goes and hangs out at a house and shows what they've been working on and what they're up to, and then we all just kind of talk and. Sometimes people will get together and help other people. Other times people just go out and do their own thing, you know. But, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's stuff. That's really great. And, you know, that's something that we're seeing a lot more, uh, Rogue Cinema. We see all these independent filmmakers from all these little pockets all across the country. Um, but yet those pockets are ever-growing with just tons of talent and tons of filmmakers that don't want to go to L.A., that want to make their own movies on their own own resources and everything, which is really great to see. We've been seeing some really awesome films. Uh, this is the first film that I've seen from Lincoln, Nebraska, but that's awesome. Sure, sure. And I like that, and I think it kind of goes with the spirit of the original as well. And One thing that really inspired me uh, when I was younger getting into filmmaking, when I would see a lot of European cinema from very, I mean Paris, obviously, and this one is a bigger city, but there were just spread across all of Europe, just these little pockets where there's these filmmakers just telling stories in their own backyard. And that was something, because then I would watch Hollywood movies and independent movies in America as well. But that was kind of something that I would always go back to that was really inspiring to me, that you could just do this in your backyard, and there were people doing it 50, 60 years ago on their own terms and whatnot. So I've always kind of uh, carried that very close to me. That's really great. Now, um, and so Mark, you have a lot of films that you've worked on, not just um, She Lives Her Life. 
How did you get started in filmmaking? I mean, I, I did do the jump and moved out to California uh, just because I, I wanted to learn. And you didn't, then, this was uh, 2000, so you really didn't have the internet as a resource as it is today. So just for me, it was easier just to go learn hands-on. I did everything, uh, production assistant, grip, uh, assistant director, you know, just a variety of uh, duties that just kind of helped me to better understand the process. How do you put this whole thing together? How do you begin it? How do you do production? How do you end it and whatnot? And then just watching others that uh, were more seasoned that had done this before really taught me a lot, you know. And now I try and return the favor as much as I can, and I, I will work on just about anything if, if somebody needs a hand uh, and just try and help and show them uh, what I've learned and, and, and guide them through the best that I can, you know, so. That's really great. And that's, you know, another thing, um, you know, as a director myself, you see a lot of filmmakers that only want to do their own projects. Sure. And I definitely, I definitely agree with you on the fact that it really helps the community <laughs> And it also helps your projects if you know what all those other jobs do. Absolutely. Absolutely I mean, yeah. if, if you can learn every job on the set, just based, she lives her life. It, it's it's so bare bones. What we did, it, it, it was a lot of the time. It was honestly just her and I. Yeah. Uh, just just making the picture, you know, and and yeah. we had very little. We don't. Sometimes we'd have one person on a crew helping, but that was honestly a very small amount of the time as well. You know, so if you can learn all of these different positions on it, you can just plug yourself into all of it, and it kind of makes you, uh, it, you get stuff done that way. You don't have to rely as, as much on other people. So <laughs> That's yeah. true. And, and Karis, I know you've done the same thing. You've also worked on a, a variety of projects, not just as an actress, but you've done writing and you've done some other positions, right? Yes, uh, I have. Uh, I've done a, a couple of uh, short films. Um, actually, one of the short films that I've done, uh, Mark Timian was my cinematographer and my <laughs> my lighting genius. And uh, it it really was a step up. The first film I made was Tree Huggers, and that was just basically my um, first attempt to like make a longer film than just you know a three minute short. And mm -hmm. it was disastrous because I was so in an unexperienced. So I, a lot of things that I should have planned for just came off last minute, and um, so it was a it was a very good test in filmmaking. I learned a lot um, from that one. So then my next short, which is called Strip Poker, um, was a step up from that, and that one was a short. I think that was like only it was under five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and like I I have a, another project that we're doing another short film that I've been working on for three years and haven't finished yet. But it's just one of those things that you know like I'll finish it eventually. But um. Yeah, I mean, I've done things. I've acted um, on several different projects. You know, I've I've done crew work for several different projects. I did a lot of crew work for She Lives Her Life. I slated yeah. probably the majority of the yeah. scenes. Oh wow, yeah. that's really cool. So, are you guys going to continue working together? I know I didn't see anything in pre-production for you guys right now. Do you guys have any projects on the horizon? We always have projects on the horizon. Uh, that's that's what we do. We always discuss like projects that we want to do and projects that we need to finish and. We have a couple ideas. He has a big idea that I'm not allowed to learn about yet because uh, he hasn't hired, hammered out all the details. But yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, she's to be critical on me sometimes. So <laughs> I, I, I need to get it uh, in a better place before, I, otherwise she'll just tear it apart, which is good, and I and I need that, and it helps me because uh, I can get away from myself sometimes, you know, and I, I need someone to bring me back down to earth, yeah. uh, which is very helpful, and she's very good at. at for me, you know, but well, we do we do a variety of, of different things too. Uh, creatively, uh, we're always just uh, yeah. We just recently did a calendar. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Hot Messes 2014. <laughs> it's it's one of more of my projects just to kind of get away from film, but like still like photography. So we made this this hot mess calendar, and like I'm still selling them. I'm trying to sell the rest of them before, but all the proceeds from that goes to back to charity. So it's like a charity project, you know, that's that's fun and involved, but also like, you know, giving back to the community, so. That's great. We'll include the link uh, for that underneath the interview here on the page. Oh, sweet. Thank you. 
So, uh, so Mark, what's next for you specifically? Like, do you have anything shooting right now? I know you have a project in post production that you were the cinematographer on. Oh, on like the IMDb that I believe that one is it's been finished, uh, and, and I'm I talked to the director, and I think he's just working on shopping it around at film festivals, and I'm I'm actually working director of photography on three projects currently, and then I'm just gathering notes and writing and just kind of figuring out, waiting for, you know, the great inspiration to hit to, like, the, the next big idea to fall in love with and say, this is the one I, I'm going to spend the next few years of my life on because that's that's just... So I, I'm hesitant as I, as I get older and I've done this uh, long enough, you, you really do have to love this project greatly the next one in order to, to, to continue with it because otherwise there just isn't any point to it so I don't there's urgency but I don't I don't like to rush it anymore it's it's, it's when the good idea hits it'll hit and, and I'll go with it so I'm just jotting down ideas and, and writing little rough drafts right now so nothing concrete though no that's awesome <laughs> now um so what are you gonna doing with She Lives Her Life? Are you guys sending that to festivals as well or just kind of getting reviews and, and stuff like that with it? Yep, all of it. Uh, the reviews right now, just trying to get a nice little handful or more of those and working on the festival strategy because that's what it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a drag. It's it's tough out there. Uh, but And then it can be very expensive as well. So uh, that's that's my plan. I'm making the list and narrowing it down, and I, I, that's something next week that I'm going to send it out to a lot of those, and you know, just just for people to see it. That's that's my biggest thing at the end of the day. I, I just want people to see it. I mean, I'm I'm really proud of the project. I, I think it's the best thing I've ever done. So I would like it just to be seen, and if I can get some sort of a distribution deal too, that would be great. But so yeah, there's there's just plans. It's just a long process. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> no, that's great. So, um, and now, Mark, I know you've been in the industry for a long time, and and Karis, you as well. What would be your advice to filmmakers that are just coming up in the ranks? Sure. Um, just just do it with whatever you have. Just 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 throw it in there. Don't be afraid to meet people. Don't be afraid to volunteer to work on projects that aren't your own. Um. I, I, I don't, yeah, like just, just, just immerse yourself in the community, especially here in Lincoln, Nebraska. There are so many friendly filmmakers that are, are looking for people to in, include in the circle. So, yeah, just, just keep doing it. Yeah, nobody, nobody will say no. If you show up and say, hey, I want to work on your movie, nobody will say no, we don't want you to. Everyone will say yes, they want your help, and you can learn so much from people that have done it before you have, or you know, the proverbial whomever I'm speaking to. And, uh, but then also for me, it's just, it's, if you want to make movies, then probably you've been in love with movies or a movie at some point, and you can use the She Lives Her Life as an example. I loved Viva Civi the very first time that I saw it, and then other, other movies like it, and it's okay to, to do that, to say, I want to make a movie like this. I mean, that's the whole point of being creative and getting into art in the first place is you saw something that inspired you. So mm -hmm. you need to go out and watch and study and dissect and just immerse your whole self in that world and something will come of that. You'll say, now this is what I want to do. Uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's perfect. And I, I completely agree with you 100%. <laughs> And it's okay, whatever it is. I mean, yeah, just, whatever it is. Whatever. Yeah, and don't be afraid to work on other people's projects. You know, like, don't mm. be so wrapped up in your vision that, like, you just have tunnel vision for what you want. You really will benefit more as a filmmaker the more you work with other people and other types. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just do it. Immerse yourself in it. Meet people. Keep going. Don't stop. Finish line. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Well, Mark and Karis, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, she Lives Her Life is the name of the film. Of course, we have the review for it here on Rogue Cinema, and we'll post the link for the IMDb page and the trailer and the link for the calendars, the hot mess calendars. <laughs> so thank, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank awesome. you for having us. Thank you very much. 
Awesome. All right, filmmakers and film lovers, we'll catch you next time here on Rogue Cinema.